Alright, so Isaiah right here, Hark now the Lord rendereth recompense to his enemies. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain, she delivered a man-child. That's verse 7 of Isaiah 66. And this might be a, a later edition, like, um, with the with the kind of the kingdom uh, not coming forth and so on and so forth on the days of Ezra and the lack of success therein but uh, it's really interesting because we have right here I want to compare it with Colossians uh, the firstborn amongst the dead. Because she, uh, before she travailed, she brought forward. Well, what um, what was what was about to happen? This would this would be after Babylon would be destroyed and um, the captives would be freed, and all these symbols for. Um, what we later understand to be the resurrection and that uh, there was a lot of understanding and we I owe a great deal of credit to the Scythian um, a great deal of gratitude to the fact that the Pharisees had um, developed you know even Ezra as a proto-Pharisee um, that they had developed these ideas of resurrection and uh, the spiritual father um, being the instructor and Um, some of these other concepts of duality of uh, you know how we understand Satan and everything because the book of Job was written later so you gotta understand and so that's how Ezra will turn things in Kings that from the Deuteronomist the Chronicler will turn things from the Deuteronomist into this duality um, from the priestly you know additions retractions and everything so you know i do owe a great deal of gratitude to the scythian but um i wanted to compare that to this uh right here i say before she travailed she brought forth so what was going to happen was uh you know a lot of sackcloth and ashes for judgment and everything for the Yom Kippur or whatever. And so for the day of the Lord, you know, for it to be, you know, really hard on them. And then uh, all the, you know, repentance to convert, to um, hang their heads as much as possible for the forgiveness. Um, there would have to be uh, a lot of uh, flagellation or whatever and fasting and uh, you know here is only going to be 70 years of uh, waiting until the captives are freed and so um, here we have in the um, life of Jesus you have um, groups of time you have 30 years 40 years and 70 years 7 years from 0 to 70 30 years from um, 4 BC to 33 AD or whatever and you know and you have these different groups and then you have the 40 years from um, Pentecost because after the Pentecost there's 40 days of people to go to the upper room and because of the 40 days as it says in Numbers There'll be 40 years of um, trial. And so, but th this is what the firstborn, the man-child, was the, the firstborn of the dead. So, who has heard such thing? Who has seen such thing? And is the Lord, is the land born in one day? Well, yes, the land was born one in day 2,000 years ago. Absolutely. The land was born in one day. 2,000 years ago when uh, Christ Jesus came to this uh, earth and suffered and died for everyone's um, 
behalf because of their own sin, they put an innocent man um, to bear it for him. And, you know, he wanted to let this cat pass before him, but if it was a father's will, but the father's will was, um, you know, he was building this nation. And just like he told Moses, he built it from one person. So here we have a whole story up from old to new. This is the, um, where it changes that the old nation was only seminal. It was only seminal. They had not even been born. And, you know, if you look at it another way, it was maybe there was one born and then the next generation. But this next generation is the apostles. And so when, when you have one born in one day, that's talking about the resurrection. And that was happened on that um, Easter Sunday. You have um, a land born in one day, the confirmation of the resurrection. And that's what St. Stephen saw when he saw Jesus up there. He knew to believe in the resurrection. And so... Um, this was the world to come and the new hope. And so uh, this is how Zion travailed. Just as the Lord told Moses that he would burn, make a whole nation out of one person, here was this next generation all born of one person, spiritual father Jesus. And so um, this 40 years is one generation. And uh, he said it would all be followed on this one generation. And so... This was the, the time of trial between the destruction, the time of judgment, 70 AD, and that would be the end of the 40 years. The beginning of the 40 years was that second generation, and so that, that was the beginning of that. When Jesus ended was when that second generation could begin um, their, their trial. And so... You, this is this is this is rejoice because this is the world to come and all this stuff. This is just about how great it would be. You know that all the land symbolism from the old. When you get to this new Jerusalem, is all going to be come to have a lot more meaning and fulfillment. And so you will come with the fires, chariots like a whirlwind. And so on and so forth. And this is to the goats, um, you know. But I wonder if I could turn to... Right. Uh, Colossians, it says, And he is before all things, and all things is in him consisted. And he is the head of the body, the kephali... Kephali... Uh, of the to to they say um the Allah and the of is just assumed I guess um, Samatos the body of the Ecclesias which is the church and he's the firstborn sorry if uh, you see any stains on my sheets or my book uh, then my uh, chicken wings I get them dripping. Uh, but so, it would say he is the first, the beginning, of the firstborn of the dead. The, what does it say? Nec necron, like nec necron, like necromancy, you know. Uh, so he's the firstborn of the dead in order that may all things, all things is passing, uh, that he. Okay, so he would he was uh you know be pleased and all that. So the moral of the story is what's the moral of the story is he's the firstborn of the dead for the kingdom. So the kingdom is not where where is the kingdom is on earth, but Jesus is in the kingdom. But you you think that the kingdom um. You know, Jesus come to earth and, you know, set up his kingdom. But why, why come to even earth, you know? Why why sink that low? Why won't, when we meet him in the air, just go up? You know, I don't understand. So, um, I guess uh, I'll um, wait for your reply.